volcano eruption, like the one under Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. The European Science Foundation has released a 70-page report called Extreme Geohazards, Reducing the Disaster Risk and Increasing Resilience. It references the Yellowstone supervolcano. Northwest Wyoming, land of geysers, mountains, and lakes, is also sitting atop a supervolcano. And it just took what scientists describe as a deep breath. The Yellowstone volcano is one of a half dozen or so tantrumy mountains that earned the title supervolcano because its eruptions can eject nearly 250 cubic miles of ash, dust, and gas. For comparison, that's about a thousand times the volume of Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, which was in itself a pretty big deal. But you shouldn't be surprised, Yellowstone is famous for its hydrothermal features like geysers and hot pots and fumaroles, which are all products of this volcanic hotspot, where half-melted magma swells up close to the Earth's swarm of earthquakes have hit Yellowstone National Park over the past week. The park is home to a massive supervolcano that could erupt at any time. So is the swarm warning us about a looming disaster? RT's Brigitte Santos joins me live from Los Angeles with the details. So Brigitte, how many earthquakes have hit Yellowstone this week? Natasha, the U.S. Geological Survey has tallied up over 500 earthquakes in that area in the past week. Now, this swarm began on June 12th, and it is currently ongoing. Swarms are incredibly common in this area. In fact, they account for about 50% of all of the seismic activity in Yellowstone. And these are quakes that are ranging from 4.5 in magnitude to below zero. So I'm not sure whether there's much cause for concern right now. I do want to mention that this is a super volcano with a thick continental crust that causes large buildups of magma and it's capable of producing a magnitude 8 eruption on the volcanic explosivity index. That means the explosion could be 2,500 times larger than the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980, which is regarded as the largest and most deadly eruption in U.S. history. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. Now that's Category 8. This report looked at Category 7, which is much more likely once every thousand years rather than once every million years. That means in every century, there's a 10% chance that somewhere on the planet Earth, there could be a super volcanic Category 7 eruption. That's the danger. A pretty scary prospect. I want to just show people what we're talking about here when we talk about this super volcano. And we have a little uh, thing to show you, a map with some of the details. So that's where it is. It's um, under, beneath Yellowstone. It's been there, as we know. I guess this has erupted three times in 2.1 mil million years. Uh, but what they're worried about is the fact that they say that the ground has started to swell in levels that they have not seen before, 10 inches in some places in the past year. What does that tell us? It tells us that there is activity in this supervolcano, which erupts roughly every 600 million years. But that's what's making us very nervous, because the cycle time corresponds to the present-day era. So every single burp, murmur of this gigantic potential supervolcano, including the rise of the sea level, has to be watched very carefully. And visitors of Yellowstone National Park have been advised to keep off the roads. That's because the heat from a super volcano beneath the Earth's surface is melting away the asphalt. Park officials have closed the three mile long roadway known as Firehole Lake Drive and have asked visitors to park on the sides of the road. Park officials warned that stepping on the seemingly solid asphalt could create an illusion and you could quickly find yourself stepping into hot water. Water buffalo stampede away from the sea. So maybe it's not surprising that this video was shot about two weeks before an earthquake measuring 4.7 battled Yellowstone this past Sunday. Um, there are several major curves or threat curves, I call them, to the people of Earth. Geophysical changes, uh, the you know geological changes, astronomical changes, uh, political changes, you know, threat of war. All these factors are playing heavily upon people's minds today. The earthquake thing, um, I used to be able to predict them fairly accurately, uh, between 70 and 90 percent on a given week, using data from the uh, U.S. Naval Facility at Fenmark over in Monterey, California. They monitor very subtle changes in the electric fields of the ocean and the air above the ocean, plus the uh, sea surface temperature variation. And this allowed me to look at water uh, coastline. 
Strangely enough, they were, uh, I was accurate enough that the Association of Island States, or Island Countries, if you wish, asked me to uh, explain how to use it so that they could use it to, to predict tsunamis. On. Some of the information from, uh, like, um, Yellowstone Park, where we have the Yellowstone Caldera, since, I think it was about February of last year, the government uh, made all of the USGS employees, truck drivers, uh, moving equipment in and out of the sensor ranges there. Everybody signed uh, non-disclosure uh, agreements with the government, uh, facing penalties of uh, you know, cash uh, fines and also imprisonment if they told what they're doing there in Yellowstone. And we had a geologist uh, break silence. Uh, I won't uh, name him, but uh, anyway, they have been running huge uh, or like high volume uh, internet lines from their sensors all over the Yellowstone Park area down into Texas. I think they may be now switching it over to the uh, uh, NSA facility in Utah. One of those uh, catastrophic super volcanic eruptions may be, you know, several hundred thousand years between times, but what they're doing now is they're measuring the increased appearance of helium, uh, an isotope of helium gas, which was buried way down deep underneath the Yellowstone. And when that starts to release, it means that there's geological activity down there in a deeper pool of magma, which they have recently. Well, the bottom line is we're going to see trouble with Yellowstone. We're going to see trouble with Lake Taupo Caldera down in North Island, New Zealand. Both of those are under severe stress uh, from different types of tectonic plate movement, but they are both super volcanoes. Um, and Lake Taupo erupted last in 87 AD. It uh, sent up so much ash from the southern hemisphere that the Chinese astronomers at that time recorded three days of darkness after the eruption down there. Now, USGS has been told not to panic people because it hurts real estate values in the economy um, if it gets too serious. But people who read between the lines will see that we're being warned by USGS by drills and just kind of subtle warnings in the newspaper in California that earthquake activity and hence some volcanic activity is somewhat imminent and they're trying to get people to gradually readjust their circumstance without causing a panic mind you with all the illegals in, in California I guess it, you know if that fell into the sea it wouldn't be a great loss but still you got to give them a chance for the new plasma pool they found deep down has opened up a vent to the northwest uh, heading toward uh, Mount St. Helens uh, direction. This one is a very deep vent because when the Fukushima earthquake occurred, on that day I was watching the seismic uh, helicopters at Yellowstone, and one of them in the northwest corner picked up and rang like a bell before the normal shockwave could have even reached the United States. And that means to me that there is a direct, uh, like, uh, hydrodynamic connection in the plasma, or sorry, in the magma between Yellowstone and the western side of the North Pacific. This is what they're watching because it will be a, a prelude to New Madrid. It'll be a prelude to a number of other volcanoes and breaking up of the west coast. So the Yellowstone caldera is kind of a, a new kind of instrument in addition to being a threat. I wanted to jump in here real quick tonight and uh, share an email that I received from a guy that I knew a long time ago, a very trusted individual that uh, has in certain ways risked his life for me and uh, same as I did for him. But uh, he sent me a very disturbing email today and you can see right here it was 8.06 p.m. exactly like 17 minutes ago. It took me a minute to get everything set up. Um, I am not disclosing this individual's name on the email. It's just not gonna happen. Um, but let me read the email for you. It says, hello Tom, just wanted to take a minute to give you a heads up. I know you have been well prepared for a long time, my friend. Just so you know, it would not be a good idea to stray too far from your bunker for a while, because he knows I have a, a bunker set up and supplies and everything. Anyway, briefly, he says, I will tell you that the USGS is suppressing the earthquake activity at Yellowstone Caldera from the general public. Washington is aware of this because they are the ones giving direction about this blackout. This is the reason for all the preparations made in FEMA Region 3. This is the reason they moved those nukes out of Texas in a big hurry. I heard something about that before. Okay, this is the reason, he says, for the schools preparing three day kits for all the students and the FEMA coffins shipped to Hawaii and the East Coast. They thought it was all going to go with the passing of Comet Ison. 
and that's why they were preparing at breakneck speed on the East Coast. They are expecting millions of refugees after the eruption. They are saying the new Madrid is also waking up, and all of this is due to an increase in solar activity affecting all the fault lines in the world. You know me, friend, and I got to tell you, I'm scared to death for myself and my family. Because I overheard a man say the other day that the big one is on the way. He leaves it with, got to go for now, friend. I hope you can survive this. I know he says, I know. I know you can survive this, Tom. Because as long as I have known you, you have always had a strong will to survive. I hope to join you and your family soon. Please save us as well. And he knows that I will always have a spot for him. But, but this is definitely pretty disturbing. And I guess it's all coming through uh, the State Department, uh, USGS. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth! by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. 